I'd like to welcome everybody to the Berwick Planning Board meeting. It's a regular meeting for Thursday, September 5th, 2019. If we could all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States, States of America and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with, with liberty and justice for all. All right. All right, so we have all the planning board members present this evening. We also have the code enforcement officer, uh, Jen, thank you for being here. We also have the town planner here. We also have the, here we go, the town planning assistant, also the webmaster, Facebook administrator, and the also the concert promoter for the town of Berwick <laughs> here, James. And the town manager. And we have the town manager and some members of the public here. Uh, moving on to public comment session is open to any resident or property owner in the town of Berwick to come forward and talk about anything that's relating to the uh, under the purview of the uh, planning board. So feel free to come forward. We're also going to have another public comment session at the end of the evening as well. So if anything comes up that you'd like to come forward to at the end of the evening. All right, seeing nobody come forward, close the public comment session meeting or public comment session. Moving on to the approval of minutes for the August 15th, 2019 meeting. You saw one small change there, Nicole. I did. I'm sure there are more, though. <laughs> um, the change that I saw is on the first page under motion and a second. It was Sean Winston, not Nicole Fecto, that seconded the motion. I just thought under the old business, number two. Apparently there is no number one <laughs> business, but <laughs> it says a, a site was completed. I think it's site walk. The site was completed. Yeah. When did site you walk. do these? <laughs> this morning? Late night. After <laughs> Dave Matthews. <laughs> During Dave Matthews. <laughs> Second or third concert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anything else? Keep going because I went up to tell Paul he, he trained you all well. <laughs> I, I saw Paul too. <laughs> I did, I did get Paul once. I found something that he didn't find. So. Yeah. <laughs> got him once. All right. Anything else? I did, I did not find it. All right. So the motion will be for the approval of the minutes as amended. I move that we approve the minutes from the Thursday, October. August 15th meeting. I did this. Okay, we have last a motion. Time. Do we have a second? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Further discussion? All As favor? amended. As amended, right? Yes. Further discussion? All in favor? Okay. All right, that's um, one, two, three, four, five. <clears throat> Moving on to conditional use application, uh, public facility, fire department, 20 Wilson Street, map U4, lot 142 1, town of Berwick. Public hearing. I'm sorry, public hearing, yes. Which was already open um, from the last two meetings, so we'll keep this one open here. So uh, this is an opportunity to come forward. Any members of the public who'd like to come forward and talk about anything under uh, this application right here for the public facility fire department. Public hearing is now open. Going once. Going twice. All right, seeing nobody come forward, I would like to close the public hearing on the fire department. <coughs> Moving on to old business, business, conditional use application, public facility, fire department, 20 Wilson Street, map U4, lot 142-1. The applicant is the town of Berwick. And I'll open it up with the town planner. Sure, good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members. Um, I have not provided you any new memos at this time. I believe, though, that there was a site walk that you folks had last week um, regarding the issue, and we did do a site walk this evening. I received a, um, updated set of, or an updated set of plans at 3 o'clock this afternoon um, with the um, proposed trail location on it, which I'm sure the applicant will discuss with you in more detail this evening. Um, <coughs> beyond that, I think you've had my previous memos on the application and um, ready to move forward with wherever you want to go with it. All right. Who's representing the town tonight? Do you need a projector or 
He's old. Projector? Uh, projector, yeah. He's Sorry. Gonna be I'm already plugging in. Yeah. <coughs> <Just gonna> move. He's <coughs> 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 Remember that if we start talking about this, we need to talk into a microphone because yeah. we got yelled at. Chairs in the way. It's fine. I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> Tough angle. Come sliding by. All right, thank you, Dan. So, <laughs> I'm Andy Highland with uh, Port City Architecture. Uh, we're the architects for the project. Uh, with me tonight is uh, Todd Gammon with uh, uh, Blaze Civil Engineers. Uh, they're the civil engineers for the project. Uh, I don't know if we how much you want me to rehash on it. We can kind of go through. Just the additions. Probably. Okay, so this is the new stuff here, basically. So <coughs> we've added, uh, you know, at the planning board's request, uh, the, the planning board would like, wanted to get a public walkway through the project. So we took a look at a couple of different, pro uh, different ideas. What we proposed is there's a sidewalk uh, down uh, down in this parking lot right now would be to continue that sidewalk, pave it up to the to the uh, new entrance to the uh, uh, fire station around the building, and then between the buildings, and we can really kind of run it in any fashion you know that we like. But uh, between the buildings, kind of give it move it up into Logan Street. Uh, this is a really nice area. You guys saw this tonight uh, at, when we come back and kind of level this area out here I think we'll it'll still have some slope to it but it won't be a terribly you know steep slope area uh, and I think it has the possibility for some nice uh, public use in the back uh, that would be serviced by this footpath and, uh, and through uh, the project so uh, we can make additions to it but that's kind of that was the that's the major change to the project tonight. That was pretty much the only change, right? Correct, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, I can go in and re talk about the looks, but I think you've seen it a few times. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to take up your time unnecessarily. Uh, just thank you for staking it out. It was a lot easier to see that out yeah. there. And how the, the size of it in relationship to how much of the wooded area is going to be left and grass yeah. areas are going to be left. Yep. Very beneficial. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're also, I, I guess, just, I don't know if Todd, you want to just kind of give the board a, uh, just a little uh, uh, update on planning other parts and permits of the project or where we're at? Yeah. Um, so Todd Gammon, Blaze Civil Engineers. We just received the Army Corps permit today, actually. And I got two minor comments on the stormwater permit from the DEP. It went, Frank and I were talking about it earlier. Um, they're in the process of finishing those up for the wetlands permit, stormwater permit, a PBR, which is a permit by rule for the proximity within 75 feet of Toa Slope to the stream. And then the Army Corps has already signed off uh, for the state. So those are... Uh, in the process of being finalized. We're gonna have a few conditions of approval um, with those and I'm gonna, I'll put any conditions on the final issue for construction set that's gonna be going to the contractors and that set will be provided to the town. Um, but there wasn't any other changes. There was, uh, fortunately, DP had a couple of minor things and uh, for the most part, it's pretty low value wetlands, okay. circumnavigated by all the development around there. No one's really surprised with that, so. Uh, no major, no major glitches in that respect. Great. Does anybody want to see this anymore? I mean, we already have these, this plan. <coughs> Can you we just go to the plan. the drainage plan or the or the utility plan? How you have Oops, that? Identified? I have the full set on there too, Andy. I <laughs> uh, know. Uh, is this what you're yep. looking for? Grady? Yeah, if, if, if Todd could just explain a little bit how all those pipes are going to be configured and just come through the pond just one more time. 
Um, so the upside from Logan coming down, I mean, essentially with the DEP permits, everything has to be treated. Uh, so there's, you know, swales that navigate each side of the, all the impervious areas coming down from Logan, all the impervious that is there for the parking, get a little, there we go. So what I'm doing is I'm going to super elevate this entrance down into a riprap <laughs> swale because of the s steepness. The swale continues, goes to an open culvert, goes through to a drain manhole, peaks through the, between the police station and the fire station, another catch basin here for a discharge into a four bay that treats any sediment prior to getting into this, uh, it's called an underdrain grass soil filter. It's a low impact development BMP that the states we've been using for 10 years now. The upside of this, we obviously have some uh, fairly steep slope coming in. We have some groundwater concerns that we had, so we put a four foot deep underdrain cutoff trench here with a surface swale on top, all the pavement. Uh, swales nicely into that catch basin. We have a cross culvert here. So there's really two entrance points to this filter. They each have four bays for sediment cleaning. All that's going to be in the O&M plan. Uh, two cells. What happens is the two cells, these are size appropriate for the DEP for the for the uh, the size of the cells are contingent upon the area draining to that. So I have an earthen berm between it. And then once it hits a certain storm event, it goes into one pond for a 25, 50, 100 year storm event. And it discharges into, you can see the gray area, uh, the little, uh, the stream, and we have a spillway in that. Uh, the Sullivan entrance is really just sheeting what the path is doing now, each side, a couple of cross culverts. This is in, uh, this culvert's gonna be embedded in the stream. Um, so, uh, you know, this, these two cells have 18 inches of what's called soil filter media. That's a special DEP blend for the water quality, uh, quantity part of the LID. Um, so that will, uh, ideally drains within 24 to 48 hours. That's all under drained underneath ties back out, goes to some nyloplast risers and exits um, through that. So obviously higher groundwater here. I think we mentioned on the site walk, you can see these contours. So the building here sat up pretty high. Um, luckily when we, we got seven borings, six test pits all around, I had them test this material to see if we could reuse it and we can. So I'm grading into this, trying to cr create a reasonable slope. So you could actually have the path that's shown on the site plan up through there. And we're going to take all this good material and put it under the pavement for some, uh, you know, free draining material. Any of the excess, more clay, more frost susceptible stuff can go on the slopes. And the, uh, you know, our intention is not have anything exported from the site. Um, yeah, and the only other thing I was glad Todd he he mentioned it that there is an O and M manual or, or operations yes. procedures that are going to have to be followed for those uh, filters and stuff. Um, there's also a certification process that will that they, the town will have to go through, and what's the frequency of that? Yep, so uh, DEP stormwater permits and uh, the big ones, the site location development, require five-year recertification. So, you know, once that, whoever's going to be maintaining this, I assume Public Works, I'll provide them with the O&M. We can go through yep. what's going to be required, and then... Uh, Three months before the five-year hits, the DEP will actually have you on a list. They'll email you and tell you you've got to re-up. You hire an engineer to come to make sure that that pond is functioning as designed. So we do that for a lot of clients as well from previous designs. And we're looking at, you know, the essentially with the cell, there's not a lot to do other than clean out a little bit of sediment out of these four bays. But what you're really looking at is, is the 18 inch media, is it draining per the design? Do you have to rototill the top? Do you have to provide, maybe scarify the top, take six inches off, add some new layer just to make sure that it is getting down? You'll know because if water's ponding up and going through the spillway and you can tell it's not infiltrating down, it's going to be pretty obvious that there's something to, to maybe do there. So, um, that's pretty standard. That five-year criteria is pretty standard with any DEP storm. There's a maintenance component yep. to it. I mean, it's a good thing to keep up on that too. I right. mean, you're going to want it for a long time to just, be. Just curious, this is a question for me for the town manager. Who currently mows all the other green space around there? Public works. Okay, and they will continue to maintain those green areas. Okay, thank you. Do we still need the screen? Yes. Good. Yeah. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat>
Well, the only thing that I had, you know, was last time that we met for that workshop session, Tom, <clears throat> was those two conditional uses, but I think one of them has been met. Me, personally, I'm completely fine with that, tri you know, that pathway through there. I think that's, you know, a great compromise to get what we need to achieve. So I'm not going to ask for the second one on that, that road out to Sullivan, but I know we're, we're now we're now we're like getting into the nitty gritty about talking about the wording of like keeping that green space for the town. You know, we talked about that. Remember? <coughs> yes, we did. Is uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 no, it, yes, Nicole Nicole brought up no that we don't have anything in for open space or recreational space, so it's public space. A definition, yeah, a definition right. in our right. land and, and if You have that? Could you read it again? The, and, yeah, and, I do. You know, is I think that you no, know, just the wording of what is there as a public space delineates you know that it's there for the town to use yeah I, I, so I, I, I can see it. I, and, I agree with that you know, as, as with any space any space at all as we've talked before is any change to that would have to go through another conditional use yeah exactly Correct. so is uh, you know by just you know saying it's open space you know you had before talked about in perpetuity is uh, you know is I don't see the need for in perpetuity in there if it's public space with the stipulation that any change would be a conditional use anyways then it always has to come back to you anyway yeah so I'm gonna read the definition for yep. public space just so we do have it for the record a gathering place or part of a neighborhood downtown or other area within the public realm that helps promote social interaction and a sense of community. Examples of public spaces may include, but are not limited to, plazas, town squares, parks, and outdoor restaurant seating. And I think after the site walk, we went and walked around a lot of the green space that would be left over. Um, it was very nicely explained to us how it was going to be graded, and it really is some prime green space over there that I think we don't really see because we have that big, ugly school sitting <coughs> in front of it. So maybe when that's down, um, it'll be more visible, and we'll have a beautiful trail going to it also. But it's also more consistent with the overlay district. Exactly. Because yeah. any space, if you're not, if you're building back further than a certain setback, that's to be public space so pub yes so it's very Correct. consistent with i believe that overlay mm -hmm. district i agree i so think it was a great compromise it public space public space so the initial what we've started tossing around so I, I guess i can i can kind of amend that as a conditional use all remaining green all remaining Shall green I? space on this property will be left as public space for future recreational opportunities unless the applicant receives conditional use approval for another use. Fine. Did you get all that? I'm getting it. What shall be instead of will be? I'll, I'll read it back to you when I get it done. Okay. Is the flagpole going to have a light on it? That's like in my notes. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's like, like an actually uplit, state law. Right? Yeah. yeah. Can, oh, okay. It is. Yeah, they have to bring it down. Yeah. Every other day, right. It needs to be lit. Yep. Yeah. All right. It's not exactly what you said, but this is what I got. <clears throat> All remaining green space shall remain public space unless any changes of use are proposed and shall come back as a conditional use permit. The other ones then. Well, no, that was ju that was just me. That that was just me. So I mean, what does what does the board think? I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Yeah. And yeah. except I want to make sure that if it comes back for a condi conditional use, that if the since the town would I would assume would be the applicant for that use, right. that there's a lot of discussion before something gets into the into the shoot for a formal process, so we understand. I know we've had the dialogue on solar arrays and some of those things, I, I think we really need to flush out those future uses well before we get in this forum to, to, to sit down. Now you've got your comprehensive planning committee coming together and a few other these things, so I think we're going to have different eyes looking at this, but I can live with the, the way you have it worded. Yeah. Anything else? No, I think that's fine. Yeah. 
that works. It's nice to see consensus building working. Do you think that you can have everything ready for uh, the 19th? Can we talk about this other condition you had put out there, Dave, though, also? You had a second one you had offered up. I, I retracted that because... Because and the I just want to, can I, if I can just offer yeah. one comment. I yeah. spent quite a bit of time talking to Todd out there. And, uh, and I think as we go forward, there are opportunities in those areas designated as wetland areas to <laughs> find some kind of a subtle meandering way to get from the end of this sidewalk that's coming up by Wilson Street and those filter pond areas that, that he's proposed. And I think once they get out there and they start doing the clearing, and they lay down the um, erosion barriers that they're gonna have to for sedimentation control, it would give us a good chance to look at that and see that there may very well be a very easy way in the future to meander a little walking trail through there so we can get that, we can get that link. I agree, and, and leaving it as public space allows us to continue to, and also um, asked to look at that. to make sure we got complete applications that he has filed that he's, uh, he's mentioned here, that we actually have hard copies of those and that we actually have all the approval letters. So that we can those, use it if we need to so go So we to can deep. build off of that. And I would like to see us building off of that as soon as these guys are pretty well wound down and the site opens back up, that we can get back out there and try to get I, the public yeah. I agree with encouraged you on that. To, yeah. to make something work yep, there. I agree. Because it's a low valued wetland, yep. if I heard Todd correctly. Yeah, that's something I'd talked about before is that is you know eventually people make a trail is is you no know, the deer will yeah. come through there the deer are in there now i've seen them out in there is uh, you know the dogs and cats and stuff will come through the, the trail will be established is it's not going to be necessarily a sanctioned trail by the town because then we go through the whole permitting pur purposes and things again yeah. but you know is if it's public space is as we talk down along the, the, the access road out there is you no know, there'll be the paved way the shoulders but the town will be maintaining some of the land on either side of it also and you know I you know I know human nature as you know human nature <laughs> is you know people will find a way through there so mm -hmm. is, uh, keeping keeping people off the paved way is no that's something that the fire chief has stressed again and again and, and i think that is what has been driving me this whole time is no going by <clears throat> what they considered the safest thing no we don't drive on those trucks we don't go through town we they do and i value what their experience tells us so is but as far as you know is i i I used to play out there as a kid all the time. I knew where the trails used to be. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, uh, you know. so you're going to lead us through there as soon as the leaves the fall off the trees, right? right? <laughs> <laughs> the, first, the first thing we'll have to do is, is uh, kill all the invasive species. In there, well, that's all it is. Th they mm. might let us do that without a permit. <laughs> <laughs> I can so, support you withdrawing your your second original. Yeah, I, I think yep. keeping the, all the green as public space kind of solves <coughs> all the problems, and then putting the sidewalk in. I mean, it's perfect so can we be ready to go with everything for the 19th uh, the only thing well depending on what you take for any action tonight the only thing we need for the 19th is the findings of fact, fact. And, yeah. and I can get those prepared for the 19th yes with and also you would have that conditional absolutely use. that the condition the condition of approval that yeah. you mentioned tonight will be part of the findings of fact yeah so we yes. could vote the application complete we did vote the application. Well, the application or, okay. I mean, we can vote the. Correct. We can vote this complete. You, you, Do you, you want further discussion? I mean, well, I mean, I'm not, we can not moving it on it. And we have letters coming in shortly from DEP responding to those two comments. And you've got the Army Corps letter already. Yep, we just got the Army Corps permit. I don't want to put a time on it. There, you know, yep. takes a little time to get signed, but that's yep. the DEP. So. <laughs> yeah, obviously, obviously, this whole application is contingent on this. Will, yeah. Will, will be on an issue for construction. So, so we could approve the project tonight correct and the findings of fact on the 19th yep and you if we could. do that does that open the door for them to start or to continue on with what they're doing well or do they need um, the finding of facts well they can't do e even without the findings of fact if they had all of their approvals from DEP and Army Corps they could start doing work 
the question is going to be, are they going to get that, bef get the DEP permits in hand before the 19th? One way or the other, you know, the findings of fact and or the, all of their um, outside permits will need to be received before they can start anything on the site. Okay. <clears throat> Which is separate from the findings of fact. That's okay. really in the big picture, minor. They can't put a shovel in the ground till right. DEP says go. Right. So, so I mean, approval tonight gives them a big step forward. Absolutely. Yeah. So I mean, you could make a motion if you'd like. I would like to make that motion that we approve the site uh, conditional use application for the what's it actually called fire or fire police <coughs> uh, public, public, public facility. facility. Okay. Uh, as presented. I second. Okay. Further discussion. All in favor. Okay. That's five zero. All right. There we go. And the condition. Subject to the conditions, Sub subject to the which condition. will come out in the findings of fact. Of course, absolutely. Right, right. And I, I do want to thank you guys for the time you spent today. I thought that was great. And I want to thank Chief Plant for the time I had a <coughs> chance to speak with him prior to the work session. And the work session that Dave called, I thought was very And I'd beneficial. like to thank Tom for coming out to that, too. Yeah. So, and I know that you we probably went home and went right to work. And the next morning, you were out there with the building committee. So <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah. It worked. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next on the agenda, in new business, conditional use application, adult use marijuana store, 357 Portland Street, map R70, lot 12-1. It's in the RCI zone, and the applicant is Paper Birch Property. I'll turn it over to the town planner. Yes, okay. Um, the applicant, Paper Birch LLC, is seeking approval of the Thank currently you, approved and under construction medical marijuana storefront to allow for the sale of adult recreational marijuana um, at some point in the future. And the reason I say that, I'll get into it, uh, suggest sometime in the future is that the state rules have not been finalized at this time and will not be out until sometime in the spring of 2020. At this point, the applicant is planning on continuing to operate, open and operate the current facility in late fall, which is medical sales only. Once the state rules are finalized, he would then convert to adult recreational, as I understand it. I'm sure he'll explain that, his process to you tonight. The applicant is not proposing to change the site as previously approved, but rather just change the use once the new rules are put in place. As a side note to all of this, it is my understanding the applicant is planning on building out the parking lot um, as proposed in phase one and phase two. Also, Paper Birch has purchased the abutting parcel where the joint access had existed. Under approvals, um, I do not believe the board needs a site visit or a public hearing on the application. However, a site visit would be good from the standpoint of seeing the site under construction so that the board can better understand what the plans look like now in reality um, from that standpoint since you've reviewed them during um, the initial process. I would suggest that if the board is comfortable with the application as proposed that a conditional use, conditional condition of approval be placed on this approval that um, requires the applicant provide a state permit to the town prior to the operation of the adult recreational sales and if the rules change at the state level that requires any change in the applicant's approach to this approval then an additional amendment be sought with the planning board prior to the start of retail sales. Mr. Chairman, point of order, could I ask? Um, what is the level of urgency of doing this now? I'm, I'm a little hesitant on acting on something that the, the law was passed. We know what the law <coughs> stated. It's the regulations on the law is where the cheese can get binding. And we don't know what those regulations are going to be. Um, the town has had a couple of instances where we've approved some things and put things in writing and then found out that they've come back to haunt us. Sure. Black Dog Realty, for example. And I just want to understand what the level of urgency is now and why we can't wait until you'd be first on the agenda. I mean, we can look at your application and just understand it. 
but you'd be first on the agenda day one after the, the regulations come out. But the urgency of now bothers me a little bit of why we're doing it. Frank, you should, be a, you should be a chairman. I was going to ask the same thing. <laughs> I was going to ask the same thing, too. In the meeting, it it be a long too. Longer. It beat me, <laughs> too. <laughs> I don't have that asterisk beside Paul's name when it says he sat on the board for 50 years and Frank filled in for four weeks or something. I want it to be a relevant a asterisk. All right, we'll turn it over to you. All right. Hi, guys. Uh, Paul Venuti, uh, Paper Birch uh, Property. Welcome back. Thank you so much. Uh, I totally understand uh, your question, Frank. Um, you know, just to get to that, the urgency is uh, that in order, the way that the process works, it, it, there's four steps that you have to take in order to apply for the state license. So in order to apply for the state license, which will be open on the 1st of November for us to apply at in between November and December, we have to have sought and received conditional approval from the town and then OMP, which is the Office of Marijuana Policy, will certify that you know we're in the proper zone and that they'll work with Berwick and there are forms that they have to fill out. But this just precedes us being able to even apply for state licensing, which is gonna open in under 60 days, in which the trick with that is in order for us to meet that deadline, we probably have about 300 operating procedures to write and get certified before we're able to um, even apply through the state. So that's why we're here now versus you know, in, a, in a couple of months. But is that stipulated in the draft regulations or is it was it stated in the law that, that you need the conditional approval? That is stipulated in the draft regulations, which actually were finalized on the, on, on, at the end, at the beginning of September. Mm -hmm. They're now in the phase now from September to November 1st, where on November 1st, they'll become state law. I mean, so we're trying to be there, you know, to be able to submit on day one, and that would be the. But we do that. know it's a conditional use that he's this going wouldn't after. For. This wouldn't Correct. allow for us to open <laughs> as an adult. Oh, no, use I realize that. We still have to go through, you know, uh, well, the state licensing bureaus in order to uh, do that. I guess I'm, my, that. where I'm going with this is it is it sufficient to state to the regulatory people, the marijuana board, or whatever it, these people are going to be, is that you are in a zone in the town of Berwick that this is an acceptable use mm -hmm. subject to conditions. Yeah. And is that enough to keep you going and hold your place in line and then you can come in once the regulations and then we'll have a complete set Well, he was just saying that he needs to have conditional use. Before I can, Before apply, can apply to the state. That's the way that the, they rolled out. But the you program. can't apply until the regulations are approved. I can apply within 60 days, but the work begins now because we have all these operating procedures, okay. facility plans, security plans. I have to go through DEP to find out if there's any environmental permits that okay. we have to pull okay. for wastewater, air, um, uh, general medical. So they're giving you a 60 day window to allow this stuff to. Well, they really want it by October 15th, but okay. you know, we're kind of trying to. You know, and I think what covers the covers us is, is, you know, thank you for proposing this conditional use, mm -hmm. which is that, you know, prior to operation, he's got to produce. <coughs> got to come back in with. Well, he's got, he's got to, he doesn't necessarily have to come back before us. He's got to come to the planning office and show them. Okay. And I think that that would be part of the, um, the, uh, why can't I think of it right now? The Occupancy oh, permit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So anything that needs to be amended, though, sh should it require an amendment, would then have to come back. Correct. If there's, again, as, as I suggest in, in the condition, that if there's a change in the state law that suggests he needs to do something different than what he's proposed, then he would need to come back before you okay. for an additional amendment. Um, otherwise, if he gets his approval tonight, for example, and um, the state rules come out and everything's all set and they issue him a permit to start, yeah. you know, in spring or whenever it may be, then he provides that to, to the office, to James and Jennifer, and um, they're off and running. I know it's weird that we're here early like that. Yeah. Like, literally, we're not, we won't even be able to open till next spring. Yeah. Right. This is just where, you know, this is where we are in the process right now. Yeah. Um, what, what it would do, Paul, as I understand from your stuff, is that you're going to operate your medical, medical operation. And then whether it's including um, or, or change over, that as soon as you get that permit, you'll be able to roll the adult recreational part of it right out. Yeah. Um, instead of having to wait 
till a later date. That's correct. That's correct. But that definitely won't be until spring-ish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they're saying March. March. I, I yeah. Mean, I'm not, I, I don't know, but. Yeah. Know. So we're just beginning this now, and we're really trying to <laughs> focus on opening it up medically, but this is kind of just got lopped on top of us, and that's. And we knew it was. Yeah, we, we knew. Yeah, we knew. We knew, we knew, we knew, knew we that you were going to be back. We were surprised to see me walking. <laughs> we knew that we were. Yeah. And he may be back again sometime too. <laughs> I know. Like for what? <laughs> you never know. I'm not. Um, I, I, I think there. that we should still have the public hearing. Well, I think that we definitely need to have adult use that we have. And that's fine. I mean, I um, my review of it was based on the physical yeah. impacts of the Absolutely. site. But yeah. if you folks yeah. choose to want to still do that. I would like to go, I would I think I would like to you know move forward with approving the application as being complete and then scheduling a public hearing you can do that for the 16th are we still doing a site walk we're well, doing Sullivan Street. a 19th rather yeah. you're under 19th. construction down there now right? right and we would have an open opportunity to go I mean you guys went on a site walk I'm sure at the very outset mm -hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't mind coming down and just taking a but totally. Look at it. All right, well, first things Absolutely. first, we should vote on whether the application is. But I would complete. do it on my but own. You have, so but have you have a question. Yeah, we have a site walk the nineteenth um, on Sullivan so Street. So you are going to expand. You're going to do both sets parts of the parking, right? We did already. Yeah, okay. We actually put in uh, the twenty nine spaces rather than the fifteen that were originally proposed under phase okay. one. We just executed. So you executed both. We have added the phase two already. Parking lot. While we it's were out taken there, off the pushing the land around, it just made sense Site to just do canceled. it now. Are we sure? Jeez. I'm going to ask James, yeah. but that's been that's been removed. Okay. James, we're taking the parking lot off the agenda for the time being, I correct? Think, yeah, I think that's what we were just talking about. Yeah, okay, like, that's that's what I that's why I was again. saying. Okay. Yeah, that's on hold until. And some for a point while. in the future. Yep. Okay. Well, well, wait a minute. I, that's. Uh, well, I had a conversation with Tom out there because I was talking with Todd, and we did. It spilled over to the seventy-one. So Sullivan. we got to be careful. Yep. We can't talk yeah. about the application. Well, but my, my point was is that I asked Tom. I said, I understand you wanted to take that off the agenda. But we can't talk about it. They're not here. So well, do we just, have a sidewalk Tom said he, he's not no. taking it off. Parking lot. He was taking it off to the work session agenda, but he's not planning on taking it off. Of our formal planning board agenda, so somebody had better figure that out. Figure before. it out. It's not the communication I saw. Well, that's not. Yeah, that's not. But that's beside. All right, that that's neither here nor there. I think we move full. First, of, we have to look at the application and whether or not it's complete. That's the first thing that we have to look at. Correct. And then we could vote on that, and then we can go from here. I move that we find the application for the change of use for paper birch medical marijuana to adult use complete. A motion. Do we have a second? Can I ask one more question? You can after you Af second it. All right. <laughs> we, need a, we need a second. We have a motion, so we need a second before we open it up for discussion. I'll second. Okay, second. And <laughs> discussion. <laughs> You're going to have both operations going at the same time or? no you can't okay that's against the state law it has right. been amended that no medical and recreational you can't do both no. okay so we'll just you'll shift from medical we would have to do that no, okay do, do, right. w with that change of use yeah further discussion okay so we have a motion and a second to approve the application complete seeing no more discussion all in favor okay all right, so we can schedule a public hearing for the 19th of September. Does that work for you? Yeah, absolutely. At 5.30? Yeah, it's great. Thank you. Site walk at 5.30, public hearing at 6.30. I'm sorry, site walk at 5.30. But I, I tell you, you better really check with Tom because that's not what he no, said I, 10 minutes ago. Correct. Okay, sorry, I didn't understand. It's okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you'll have a site walk at 5.30 and then a public hearing at James, public hearing, 6.30, plenty of notice to notice it? Yep. Okay. All right. Good. Yeah. Good. All yeah. set. Thank you. <laughs> and then we have the findings of fact next on the agenda for the four corners clean. Of which I'm going to recuse myself, Mr. Chairman. Please do, Miss <laughs> Vice Chair. 
And that was the, they came in, so that was them that yeah. came yeah, back. Yeah, they, they showed up. They didn't need to yeah. be here for the fourth place. had to take two showers to come to our board <laughs> meeting. <laughs> 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 we have to vote on this. So the motion will be for the approval of the findings of fact for four corners clean. We don't need to read, read through them all, do we? No, because there was, there was nothing that we have. That was a, I think that was a John Stoll thing. But there's, I usually read through the conditions of approval, but there were none on here. Well, no. they, with the exception of the signage. The DOT. The DOT yes. sign, is that on here? Yes. Yes. That was under the condition. I didn't even bring that tonight. Apologize. The findings. You're on your own. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what? I'm confused. The findings of fact? Findings of fact are right here. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I didn't bring a bring copy for me to look at, so oh. I can't oh. tell you what's on there or not. <laughs> You're on your own. <laughs> I believe it should be on there, though. Yeah, it was yes. agreed that the staff and applicants should work with Public Works and Maine DOT Scarborough office in order to get appropriate signage warnings, motorists of the driveway location. Correct. Okay. Good. I'll make a motion to approve the findings of fact for Four Corners Clean, 173 Route 236. Okay, we have a motion. I'll and, second. And a second. And any discussion, further discussion? All in favor? No? Accuse? Recuse? I'm recuse. Do you want to accuse yourself? <laughs> accused and recuse. <laughs> All right, so that's four, uh, four in favor and one recusing. You did get the HHE 200 forms? Don't lose, uh, don't lose sight of that, please. They were at, we asked that they be asked for that, so I don't know whether. Just don't lose sight of it. Okay. That's all I had asked. Maybe recognizes rejoining the, the okay. meeting. Because Mr. since there were two systems there, <laughs> yes. two wells, yes. I kind of wanted to see how everything kind of fit on that footprint. Nobody here is representing the town tonight, right? The applicant's not here. No. Do you have anything that you'd like to pass along from the applicant from the town regarding a, any potential site walk that's been canceled? No? Okay. Um, all right, moving on to public comment session. I have a comment. It's not public. I saw Paul Beauvert oh, this weekend, and I was telling him about keeping him abreast of, of everything that's been going on here and told him about it was right after we found out that the town had agreed to put in a sidewalk to keep <laughs> our green spine open. And uh, he told me to tell everybody that uh, he was so happy he jumped out of his chair. If you saw him, you would know that that's Im impossible, but, uh, but he, was, he was very happy. He made a big effort to, to say that. Then one more comment. He had a visitor, and I'm glad she went because it made his day. Uh, anybody knows Jessica Sheldon? I was there yeah. when she was there, And yeah. the role that she played in the downtown yep. visioning yep. and getting a lot of this stuff off the ground with the farmer's market and stuff. She was there with her father. And, it, it, yeah. topped, it topped it off. I was, yeah, good. I was there when she walked up, so it was good because I got to update her on that. And too. I asked Paul if he asked her if she was moving back to town. He says no, he didn't. She's, I don't think she has any interest <laughs> in coming back to Wick City. <laughs> All right, uh, anybody else? Any matters of interest for well, the Well, the only board? other thing is I, I, I saw a note from Rick Vandenberg, and you, you're going to come before the selectmen and present the Rick Master Plan at some point, the update when vision? Allowed to, yes. What's that? <laughs> when I'm allowed to. When you're allowed to. And it's just a please follow along because I know in there they did address the Esterbrook Park. Correct. No matter what position or scenario it follows, so we want to make sure that we keep them Actually, can apprised. I, can, make a I mean, that's the can you talk get a, into you the gotta go to the mic <laughs> for our viewers at home? Rick Vandenberg, 51 we've, East Pasture Road. We've got great road. ratings, by the way. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> we've got great ratings Lately on TV <laughs> at home, so okay. want to keep that up. That's great. Yeah, I'll do my best. Uh, so actually the reason I came tonight was because I was asked in, via email by Frank to attend the meeting to be, to be heard from the perspective of um, the recreation requests that have been made um, at the fire station um, relative to the plans. And I can tell you that what's, been, what's, what's moving forward 
is ex basically in right in line with what's in the rec master plan. I mean, pretty much to a T. I mean, we say there are two places where the, where um, Esterbrook School is mentioned, um, and in both places where we basically say very generically in one place, leave leave some space open, you know, for public use is basically what we're saying. The understanding that there's going to be a fire station there. And the second place, we just say that uh, basically continue the green spine. Right. And in, 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 a, in, in a little bit different word, but we, we say the same thing. And uh, so you, from that perspective, you have our support. All right. I don't know what we were going to say if you wanted to put a giant skating ring up there, but, um, <laughs> you know, that, that was another thing. <laughs> <laughs> what about your indoor pool you guys talked about? <laughs> okay. Thanks, Rick. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Rick. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, by the way, Rick, we have an open position on the planning board, yeah. so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, they elected him steering chairman of the steering committee, didn't you, for the comprehensive plan? Or was that a joke? No, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> James, we have a question from Sean. Any updates from across the street? Um, yeah, so there's an interested buyer in the property, and um, a rep, rep from that company reached out this past week, and again this morning to both Rick and I. They're Why are your arms crossed? You know what that tells us? You're lying. You? Con no, it's <laughs> confrontational. Yeah. Like you're ready for a fight. This is just training him. Actually, you're right. It does means he's. It's actually himself. comfortable to be like this. <laughs> Otherwise, I don't know. Don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> yeah, what do you do with them? Come here and match him. Loosen up. <laughs> have they reached? Have they reached out no. to? Have they reached out to uh, fund a Jupiter? Yeah. And yeah, they're in communication. They they actually met initially a couple months ago, and from what I heard, the meeting went really well. This is the same local developer. Yes, local as in in this at least in this region. Yeah. Southern Maine. Much more local than Front of Jupiter. Well, that's, that's <laughs> good to hear. Just as a, an eye opener, um, the fact that you're doing the 133 lot over there and all those vehicles now are got permission to come over here, it looks like there's a lot more than 25 vehicles finding its way into that. Do we really have a true headcount on the park and ride scenario for vehicles? Because, I mean, Moving forward, we, we, I think, need to see that the town fathers take care of planning ahead for that because, I mean, it's a pretty substantial number of cars in there. Yeah, I think, you know, can I add something? I, I you got to stand up, Rick. Like, <laughs> Come on, Rick. Keep those ratings going. When I go going. by there, I, I count the numbers, and I, and I actually think it's, it's basically between 20 and, and 28 is what I usually okay. count when I go by there. So... Um, I was very interested, mostly as the project was, was getting, you know, we we're about to start and we had to close that parking lot down because I was concerned about where they would all go. Where do they go when you're done with the cleanup? Well, they can go back. They can go back. I mean, it's, we're going we're gonna to finish the parking lot with, um, with some um, recycled asphalt. So it'll be leveled and compacted and hopefully a little bit better than, than, than what it was. Okay. So, and depending on where we finish up and whether I, I have some money, at the end, I may see if I can get EPA and whether, and that grant for that lot, I don't know if you all know this, runs out. We have to spend all the money by the end of September. And so we're doing our best to do that. We may, ha however it sh shapes out, we may have some, a little few extra bucks. And if I can put a skim coat of asphalt over a lot of it, I, I, I'll try to do that. Permission to go into the weeds a little bit, Mr. Oh. Chair? Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, it's about a You've got five minutes, Frank. <laughs> You're on the clock. Thinking ahead, please. and we're looking at low uh, impact design, we're looking at uh, impervious, pervious conditions. Should we be looking at any porous type surfaces inside of the 11 acres of the prime site, realizing that you guys have gone through this whole Brownsfield scenario to cap and cover or contain? I mean, if you all of a sudden wanted to say put in a geocell grid system for 20 parking spaces, that would kind of be counter to what you guys were trying to accomplish with the Brownsfield capping. I don't. I don't think that's counter at all. In fact, okay. I so it opens the door to, to do that. You can think of the cover system that we that we the temporary cover system we have there, and what will be permanent, whether it's in the front yeah. or whether it's represent represents um, in the form of a parking lot Two or a building foundation. Two minutes. Two minutes. 
any of those things, it, it's just a physical separation. So as long as you have that separation, it's not whether it's permeable or impermeable. Okay. These are all conversations that we can have off the record because they That's do, why doesn't. I asked to go into weeds a minute. Well, no, and I should have I should have denied that request. <laughs> um, these are all conversations, no, that we can honestly have out in the open, yeah. um, you know, and it doesn't really relate to anything right now. But does anybody else have anything else that they like to share with the public, our viewers at home, or the planning board? All right. N next on the agenda is the adjournment, and. Um, we have a new uh, planning board member. Normally, so. we have our, our new members adjourn us. Uh, I motion for adjournment. You need to put your microphone on. I motion for adjournment. <laughs> we I'll have second. a motion, <laughs> and we have a second. Further discussion. All in favor? 